All right, week four of the summer wrestling, and this is gonna be the world championship week. And I got a little bit of a storyline going on during summer wrestling. For three weeks in a row, we've had Randy Orton versus Chris Benoit from SummerSlam 2004 as the summer wrestling match of the summer. So I made my goal this this week to try to find a bunch of the great world championship matches and try to find a match that would knock Orton versus Benoit off the top of the mountain. So let's, let's see if any match did it. Let's see if we have a new number one match. So the first match I saw, Ric Flair versus Von Garvin, Starcade 1987. It's got 17 minutes long. It was a steel cage match in Chicago for the World Heavyweight Championship. Very physical match. It had Jim Ross on commentary. Really good match. I, I liked it. Um, I don't know why, but for a reason, it wasn't great. Just was missing something. It wasn't very memorable. It was, just, it was a very physical match, but and Ric Flair won a championship, one of his 16 championship wins. But it felt like it was missing something memorable. It didn't feel like a very memorable match. I wanted to give it four stars. I just couldn't. I ended up giving it three stars and three fourths. But it was a really good match. I think Riff Flair was a heel and he was getting cheered. So that was like, you know, fun to watch. And the crowd was hot. It was a good match. I just, for whatever reason, I just couldn't give it four stars. It just wasn't that good. This next match I saw was Randy Orton versus Christian over Limit 2011. And yeah, it was the first time I've ever seen that match from beginning to end. It's for the World Heavyweight Championship. This, is, this match is. Out of the entire like Orton vs. Christian feud in 2011, this was considered the best match. Got 17 minutes, a little bit less than 17 minutes. Very good wrestling, good techno wrestling in this match. I gave four four and one quarter stars. That was a very good match. Didn't like really love it, but it was really good wrestling, good like reversal stuff. Even like I think Orton was even like pulling out spots that like I've never even seen him do before. Good stuff. Um, next match I watched, Edge vs. Undertaker, One Night Stand 2008, it was a TLC match for World Heavyweight Championship. Mick Floyd was in commentary during this match. Um, this was a great spot fest. You know, tables, ladders, and chairs. The whole point of that match, you're supposed to use a lot of ta tables, chairs, and ladders, and that's what they did. Ladder, ladders being used a lot, the chairs were being used a lot, and there's like a, a lot of table spots. I mean, like, a lot count, but... You were like, at least eight tables probably got broken during that match. Uh, one thing I heard this match was like a lot of run-ins was during the match. This one, Edge, Edge was in La Familia, so we had Chavo Grill made a run-in. Zach Ryder made a run-in. And, what's his name? Kurt Hawkins made a run-in. So they all interfered in the match. But then like, Kurt Hawkins and Zach Ryder all got put through tables. That was kind of cool. There were like two giant table spots where... Undertaker power bombed Edge for two tables, gave him the last ride, and then Undertaker was on top of the ladder, and Edge pushed him off the pushed the ladder down. The ladder was like crashing towards um, in the ropes, and Undertaker flew, fell the ring and landed onto like four tables that were set up outside the ring. It's a great spot, and I think some of you were complaining how these spots look like they were clearly set up. Like tables are all like specifically placed in certain spots, and you like. So they was going to go through a table, especially like, like um, Ryder and Hawkins when Undertaker was throwing Ryder's Hawkins through tables. They were, he, they were conveniently like placed right where um they were standing, so it was made it easy for them Undertaker to throw them to a table. But that's okay. I don't care about that. I just they're fun spots to watch. I don't care if it looked fake. It's supposed to be fake. You know, I know it kind of looked obvious, but I don't care too much about that stuff. I'm watching matches. Want to be entertained. And that was very entertaining. Uh, just with because of the appearances, all the run-ins, I couldn't give it a really high rating. I wanted to go higher, but but I gave it four four stars in the corner. That was a really good match. It got almost twenty four minutes. Good spot fest. You like spot fest? This, this is a good one. Okay, the next one I saw from Backlash two thousand and and write down the year. I think it's two thousand four. Backlash two thousand four. 
was World Heavyweight Championship match in Canada, Edmonton, Canada. Triple H versus Shawn Michaels versus Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit's hometown. This match was great. I love how in this match, at one point Earl Hefner comes out and he's like the guy who like helped using the um, Bret Hart Shawn Michaels match in Montreal Survivor Series where he like rang the bell with the Montreal screw job. So he was in the ring and then like Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit and the uh, and sharpshooter. And it's, it gets a huge like you screwed Bret chant from the crowd. And they had um, then like at the end of the match, Shawn Michaels was put in the sharpshooter by Ben One, and Ben One, not Ben One, Shawn Michaels tapped out. I thought it was a good match, really good. wasn't wasn't as great as I was expecting, but the crowd was really into it the whole time. It was a very triple fresh match. I didn't give it. I'm right down the time. I think I got 30 minutes or so. So for for a long match, it did really good. So I get four stars. But probably not as good as their WrestleMania 20 match, but pretty good for rematch. Some of those rematches are not always as good as the original, but this one was pretty good. Okay, three more matches to go. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Summers. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Kurt Angle at SummerSlam 2001. So a 22-minute long match. This was uh, for a WWE Championship. And for Kurt Angle... We got bloodied a lot in this match. He survived. Free he took the stunner three times and didn't get pinned after each one. And from start to finish, this match was like fast paced. There was like no slow spot. Like no like like really the times where the match got boring. It just kept going, kept going. They didn't really slow down for anything. They were slowing down when they broke guys from the ground, but it was a really fast paced match. Um, a lot of fighting outside the ring. Didn't seem like there were a lot of good, good high spots or didn't know that many near falls. This match ended in disqualification, which I think hurt the match. And some people rated it, and you know, like I guess they um like the, 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 the disqualification finish hurt the match a little bit for them, but for me it hurt a lot because I just think a match like that I really want to see a finish and for it to end disqualification that really like you know. Made a match feel worse, but there's other stuff I didn't like about it, like maybe brawl outside the ring too much. But so I gave it four stars and a quarter, but a lot of people also gave it like close to five stars. I couldn't go that high. Like I was like one of the lowest ratings for this match, but it's a good match. But it probably didn't feel like a blow off match. You knew they did another match at the next pay per view, and that was I think this was the blow off. This is SummerSlam. They should have had to blow up at this pay per view. They didn't. Okay. CM Punk versus Alberto Del Rio versus The Miz for the WWE Championship. This was TLC 2011. As well as match. This is a match I. I thought I saw this match, but when I was watching, I'm like, no, I, I haven't seen this match. I was kind of surprised it took me this long to watch it because this is probably one of his best matches from his. Um, his four. Was it 434 days? 434 days title reigns. This is one of his better matches, and this is pretty. That's pretty impressive considering who he's facing, Del Rio and The Miz. You know, he had a great match with Cena and Dan O'Brien. But these are, to have a good match with these guys is pretty impressive. This was the main event, which is kind of rare for this, um, for his title reign. Most times, he was in the main event a lot during his long WWE Championship reign, but most times it's with, it's with Cena. And of course, Cena was not at his peer review, so that's why he was the main event. It'd be kind of cool if, like, Cena was in the mid card and Punk was in the main event, but no. Cena wasn't, I don't know why, but Cena was not wrestling in this peer review, and that's why Cena Punk was in the main event. But he had a good main event match. See, Punk got handcuffed twice, and he still won the match. And, and the best spot of this match, Ricardo's on the ladder. I guess his plan was he was going to, so it's a TLC match, so. Ricardo's the liner, I guess he was going to grab the title and give it to Del Rio. I guess they would have accepted that. So, like, Punk and, I think it was Punk and Miz both, like, worked together and pushed the ladder. And there was, like, these two tables set up outside the ring. And he, Ricardo went through one of the tables. He didn't go through both, but he, I think he went through one, only one of them. But it was an amazing table spot. Like, really good. Like, I maybe one of the best table spots in a long time. I mean, for, like, Ricardo... Like not, he's not really a wrestler, but 
That Tails battle is amazing. And I gave this match four stars. I liked it. It was a good, very good, like, um, title defense match for CM Punk, especially, you know, main event match. You know, high pressure situation. You know, he's got to deliver against two opponents that, like, I'm kind of a fan of The Miz. I'm more a fan of his character. I'm not really a fan of his wrestling. Del Real, same thing. I like his promos, but I'm not really a fan of Del Real's wrestling. So for him to have a good match against those two guys, is like, that's really impressive. Del Real had a good performance. I like Del Real's progressing this with the chairs, and he was doing the arm bar on people. And he could put the arm in the chair, and he was doing the arm bar on them. So that was pretty good. Yeah, I like this match. Good stuff. 18 minutes long. And my last match I saw was the... Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle. This was the Iron Man match from SmackDown on September 18, 2003. It's an hour-long match, of course. This was surprisingly. It was, I thought this was, this was only a dirt Iron Man match in history for WWE. I was surprised that they they've only had they made a few Iron Man matches at that time. First one was the WrestleMania one with um, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, and the second Iron Man match was the Judgment Day 2000, The Rock versus Triple H. Iron Man match. So this was um, Brock Lesnar won five to four, and I throw us this match like Lesnar went up five to two, and then Kurt Angle made a comeback, but he just ran out of time. Like he actually had Lesnar into the ankle lock with like twenty seconds left, and Lesnar held on. He didn't tap out. But this match, you know, last week I watched Orton versus Cena, the Iron Man match, Iron Man match, and probably what that match was the second half was too slow. And the same thing happened in this match. Started, started pretty good, and then the second half it just slowed down and got boring. And now you think, like, you know, most Iron matches, they're not long. It's hard to keep people excited, interested for the whole hour, but I did watch CM Punk versus Chris Hero. They had a 93 minute match for IW in itself, and I just enjoyed the whole match. Yeah, I didn't care it was 93 minutes. It was a very entertaining match, so. so Every match 60 minutes is no excuse. You know, gotta be able to keep me entertained for the whole hour. Like when they got to the last five minutes, stuff me wanting to keep, stuff me wanting to like, say, oh, this match, I hope it doesn't end. It was like, oh, this, come on, let's just get to the end. I was getting ready to like, I'm kind of bored with it. I wanted to just get to the end, which is not good. That's not what should happen when they're watching Iron Man matches. But I gave it four and a quarter stars. I liked what they were doing. Good wrestling. A lot of respect for guys who go 60 minutes. They had good, pretty good story with how Lesnar was doing everything he could to like win. He was cheating. He was hitting, he was hitting um, Angle with low blows. And he was hitting with the belt. And he was hitting, he actually got himself disqualified once with a steel chair just so he can like take advantage of the fact that Angle was like still like recovering from the chair shots. So that's a good story. But I didn't want to give it a I was gonna overrate this match because it wasn't really that, that great, but for, it's a pretty good SmackDown match. And I watched it on on the greatest star, superstars of the 21st century DVD, which had a match uncut with no commercials. That was fun to watch. But yeah, we're in quarter stars. So let's go over the top. I didn't write it down. Let's see if I can remember this. Top four. I gotta see if I can pause this. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Hope I can add these two videos together. So here we go. Got the results now. Top five matches of week four. Number five, Triple H versus um, Shawn Michaels versus Chris Benoit from Backlash. Number four, Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle from SmackDown, the Iron Man match. Number three, Randy Orton versus Christian from Over the Limit. Number two, Stone Cold versus Kurt Angle from SummerSlam. And my number one match of week four, is Edge vs. Undertaker, the TLC match from One Night Stand 2008. So here we go. Top 5 matches this summer. Time to find out if we have a new um, champion. <laughs> new match this summer. Let's see. Number 5. Smackdown ladder match from Money in the Bank 2010. Match won by Kane. S stays on the, um, on the top 5 for the 4th week in a row. Gave that match 4 at quarter stars. Number four, new match to the countdown. Edge vs. Undertaker, One Night Stand, 2008, four and a quarter stars. Number three, Cactus Jack vs. Vader from Halloween Havoc, 1993, 
four and a quarter stars. Number two, John Cena versus Dolph Ziggler from TLC 2012, four and a quarter stars. And for the fourth week in a row, the Undisputed Champion, Randy Orton versus Chris Benoit for SummerSlam 2004, four and a half stars. So the streak continues. Four weeks in a row, Orton versus Benoit, number one match of the summer. Gonna keep trying to knock it off. I'm not gonna force it. I'm not gonna like make a match better than it really is, just so I can get any number one. You know, some match match got really impressed me. I'm gonna really like bring out the pressure. Really gonna try to knock it off up to the top. And this next week's gonna be Ring of Honor week. You know, loaded with the best seven Ring of Honor matches I can find. I haven't seen yet. And hopefully we'll get we'll get a new number one match this summer. Okay, thanks for watching. Be back next week.